Hey Eagles fans, I'm Thomas Mock. Welcome to Fiddle Eagles Now. And today, it's the first of two mailbag videos. Yes, you guys submitted your questions, and now I will answer them as they were basically in order, in the order that I got them. Now, of course, a lot of people ask similar questions, so if you see a question that was similar to yours, and you're like, why wasn't mine picked? Because I took one question and kind of made it the question to uh, represent all the other questions that were similar to that question. Does it make sense? A little bit confusing? Let's go and jump right into all your guys' ego-related questions here. God of Mad Madden, is he? Or are you a god of Madden? I don't know. I'm pretty good at Madden. Ask, Eagles, uh, can the Eagles repeat as NFC East champs? Well, yes, they can technically do whatever they want to do. The question should be, will the Eagles uh, uh, go ahead and repeat as NFC East champs? I would say probably yes. Now, go back to last year and take a look at the standings. 9-7 and seven won the NFC East for the Eagles. The Cowboys, as they usually do, finished 8-8. Eight and eight. I think the Giants and Redskins down below. I, I think the Giants and Redskins are going to be a lot better this year than they were last year. The Giants, obviously, have year two of Daniel Jones, year three of Saquon Barkley, a new head coach. I think they will be at least a seven or eight win football team. And the Redskins finally have a competent coach in Riverboat Ron. They got Chase Young and Dwayne Haskins in a second year. I think they'll be a seven or eight win team as well. The wild card, of course, is the Dallas Cowboys. I think the Eagles are the favorites to win the NFC East by far, but Dallas did have a very good offseason. They drafted CeeDee Lamb. They added Gerald McCoy. Yes, they signed Andy Dalton and HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix. They had other moves as well. They honestly had one of the better drafts out of everybody in the entire NFL draft. Now, I don't want to give the Cowboys too much credit because Dak Prescott remains unsigned in terms of his long-term deal. That might mess with the chemistry of the team overall, but I would say, yes, the Eagles will repeat as NFC East champs. They should repeat. They had the best roster out of any team in the NFC, but Dallas, of course, lingers, and the Giants and Redskins will not be rollover games as a lot of people have seen them over the past couple of years. Now, I'll ask the guys right off the bat, who's the biggest threat to the Eagles in the NFC East? Be honest, right? I don't want to see nobody. We're going to win 16 games. Be honest, right? The, 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 NFC, the Eagles are not uh, immune to losing NFC East games. They open on the road at Washington. Who is the biggest threat to the Eagles this year in the NFC East? All right, moving on, more questions here. Eric Kyle asks, hashtag Eagles, but with Fletcher Cox getting double teamed like every other play, and especially if we get clowny, how many sacks would Javon Hargrave have next year? BTW, you forgot Hargrave and your big four of offseason additions. I think he was bigger, second best, second biggest addition behind Slay. Um, okay, yeah, you were right. So if you did not watch my video a couple of days ago, this was my old key additions list. Darius Slay, Jalen Rager, Jalen Hurts, and Marquise Goodwin. Now, a lot of times with the graphics here, you can only throw four people up at a time, so I couldn't add everybody. But you are right, you are right. I should go ahead and replace Marquise Goodwin with Javon Hargrave. I kind of forgot about Javon Hargrave, even though he, like you said, was the second biggest offseason addition. I guess the whole Jalen Hurts thing has clouded my uh, recent memory and maybe thinks so much about Jalen Hurts and not about the good players we saw sign like Javon Hargrave. So here's the new list. Slay, Rager, Hertz, and Hargrave are your four big additions. Now, of course, they had plenty of other additions as well. So we'll just get that out of the way right off the bat. Although you did ask, um, we got Clowney. How many sacks will Javon Hargrave have? Well, I mean, I don't know if we're going to get Clowney. I think Hargrave will have probably six or seven sacks next year. He's a defensive tackle, right? D tackles don't normally get a lot of sacks. Even Fletcher Cox doesn't get a lot of sacks. So I think he'll have six or seven to answer your question there. It's pretty easy. Um, Rashi Zamora, he asked, yeah, Eagles with new weapons, can Carson Wentz have another MVP season? Yeah, I mean, Carson Wentz can have an MVP season without weapons, and we'll show you guys that here in a second. But if you want to talk about weapons that Wentz now has, listen, are they the weapons that I wanted Wentz to get? No, but are they weapons nonetheless? Yeah, te technically, Rager there in the first round, Watkins and Hightower, your later round speed guys, and then Marquis Goodwin, your aging disgruntled disgrace speed guy who you hope can turn into his old self, I guess is the hope there with Marquis Goodwin. So those are the four new weapons, obviously alongside all the other weapons he already has and Miles Sanders and Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard and Deshaun Jackson. But here's the deal. You said with the weapons, can he have another MVP season? How about Carson Wentz last year without weapons? Remember, I mean, who was he throwing to last year? There were times Ertz was injured. It was Goddard. It was Whiteside. It was Ward. And it was, um, uh, who was the other? Like Perkins was in there as well. Gosh, it was just awful. And yet Carson Wentz had 4,000 yards, 27 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, and a 63.9 completion percentage. This is the reason why when you see those debates on national TV saying, oh, Wentz versus Dak and Wentz versus Goff and Wentz, Wentz, Wentz. Wentz played with nobody last year. Dak had Amari Cooper. Like, if Carson Wentz had Amari Cooper, this could have been 5,000 yards passing last year. I mean, come on. Injuries uh, are, are a big deal in terms of what a quarterback does, and yet Carson Wentz still balled out without basically any 
I mean, legitimately any real weapons towards the, towards the latter part of the year. So yes, 100%. Wentz can get back to 2017 and have another MVP season. Now, a lot of these guys are new wide receivers. Who is the best Eagles wide receiver uh, on, on the team right now? Is it still Deshaun Jackson? Do you believe in Alshon Jeffrey? Or is it one of the new guys who's a good winner, Rager, or maybe Greg Ward? Let me, let me know what you guys think about who is the Eagles' best receiver currently on the roster. Okay, have you guys been going out and about and shopping for groceries or going to the dog park or hanging out? maybe socially distanced with your friends, but are wearing a really bad looking mask that you're worried doesn't even really protect you. We have you guys covered, Eagle fans. We have actually Philadelphia Eagle official masks that way you guys can stay safe and be protected as well. Well, also looking pretty darn good in these masks. Three pack, 25 bucks, chatsports.com slash Eagle mask. There's also a link in the description right now. Why would you not want to rep your team during these crazy times with an official Eagles face mask? Go ahead and check those out. Again, three pack for $25. It's better than and the granny knit one that probably didn't even protect you overall. So go ahead and pick one up right now. Moving on, Joseph Abril, he asked, what he asked, will Carlos Hyde ball out with our great O-line compared to the Texans O-line? Okay, this is a tricky question because I, I I almost disagree with it. So your first question is, would he ball out with our great O-line? Yeah, I think he would. You saw what Miles Sanders did last year. The Eagles have one of the best offensive lines in the National Football League. Balling out behind the Eagles offensive line is not hard to do. Now, you slandered the Texans O-line and yet Carlos Hyde 1,000 yards rushing last year, right? Like, if you understand that Carlos Hyde balled out behind the Texans O-line last year. When we think the Texans O-line, you think that they're bad all around. They're good in run blocking. They're awful in pass blocking. That's the problem when we think about the national media ripping them because Deshaun Watson's on his backside every single time. So yeah, listen, would he be great in, uh, behind our O-line? Yes, I've talked about Carlos Hyde all week long here on the channel, including my video yesterday about the four running backs the Eagles should go ahead and sign, or you know, for four that they could sign. But we don't want to slander the Texan O-line too much because Carlos Hyde absolutely balled out last year. But, you know, all, all, all kidding aside here, let's, let's be real. Uh, Hyde would be great in Eagles uniform. He'd be great next to Miles Sanders. I would love to have uh, Car Carlos Hyde. There you go. Okay. Um, love that the next question person's name. Cowboys suck one, two, three. Yes, they do. Should the Eagles trade for a big play linebacker? Also, didn't the Eagles sign uh, and NRC Nickel uh, Roby Coleman? Uh, yes, technically, and yes, they should, but they won't. So, getting back to your trading for a linebacker. But yes, the Eagles have terrible linebackers. We know this. The Eagles' worst position on their football team is the linebacker position. I've been saying this for months and months and months, and yet no one wants to seem to. No, 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 no one cares, right? No one cares about the linebacker position, which is still one of the most important linebacker positions in the National Football League. Now, would you like to trade for a big name linebacker? Sure, but who? Who's going to trade you their good linebacker right now after the NFL draft? Nobody. I mean, nobody's going to trade you a good linebacker right now at this point, <laughs> excuse me, in the NFL season. So get that idea of trading for one out of the way. You should have drafted one during the draft like I said that they should. And then, yes, they did sign uh, NC, uh, NRC, and a lot of people think he could be the slot cornerback. I disagree. I think Sidney Jones or Avante Maddox will be the slot cornerback. Um, Okay, so be sure to subscribe. We might have hit 10,000 subs by now because I film these and then you guys click sub and then, you know, we don't know how many we have until the next day or we're close. So we're approaching 10,000 subs, I believe, which means you guys need to go ahead and click the big red subscribe button because like 20,000 of you guys normally watch these videos. We have 10,000 subs. You do do the math there. A lot of you guys are not subscribed. So go ahead and scroll down and click the red subscribe button. We would greatly appreciate it. Um, Let's see, a couple more here. Austin Barfell, he asked, what's the latest on Malik Jackson news after missing most of last season due to injury? Well, he missed all of last season due to a preseason injury. It tore, tore his uh, ACL, which immediately ruined his chances of playing at all during the NFL season. Here's the deal, though. He's 100% healthy. He's going to be playing and probably starting, I mean, competing for starting position with Javon Hargrave. But if you look at what you're going to get with Malik Jackson, it's very exciting. I love this. So 2017 is his best, most recent year. Again, injuries have kind of plagued him the past couple of seasons. Eight sacks, four forced fumbles, 40 tackles, 12 quarterback hits. That's a defensive tackle with eight sacks. I said earlier, right? Javon Hargrave probably going to get six, seven, or eight sacks. That's like the high point for a defensive tackle. Unless your name is Aaron Donald, you don't get a lot of sacks. Now, you get a lot of pressures, a lot of run stops, a lot of TFLs, a lot of quarterback hits. But sacks are very hard to come by. And the fact that Malik Jackson was able to do that in 2017 on the Jacksonville Jaguars, I think shows that he's going to ball out in the Eagles de uh, defensive line. He'll rotate in there with Cox and Hargrave. Sometimes it'll be Cox and him. It'll be Hargrave and him. Sometimes it'll be Hargrave and Cox. Like, it's going to be mixed around. But I think, he, I mean, he is healthy. That's the news there. And I think he's going to absolutely ball out after his injury last season. Now, 
Just pick one here. Final question of the show. Pick one. More sacks in 2020. Hargrave or Jackson? Who do you guys think will have more sacks at the defensive tackle spot? Hopefully both of them have like 10. But if we're being realistic, who has more? Pick one and let me know who it is down below. Um... Ooh, okay. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and do do this one, and then we gotta uh, we gotta go because of time. Snarvel three three one. It's a great question. Best for last. How far did the Eagles set themselves back by wasting a second round pick on Jalen Hurts? Okay, so I've thought about this question a lot because I have been someone who hates the Jalen Hurts pick in the, in the second round. You guys know this. I will probably eventually, if he ever you know starts and plays for the Eagles, we'll have to eat my words. But I don't think he's going to. That's why you shouldn't spend a second round pick on a quarterback. But the question is, how far do they set themselves back? Not very far, but at the same time, look at who you could have had. Just think about this. We've talked about the Eagles maybe needing another pass rusher, maybe another running back, maybe another wide receiver in free agency right now. You could have had one of those, but with the Hurts pick, AJ Epinesa was taken literally the pick after. J.K. Dobbins, two picks after a running back. Van Jefferson, Denzel Mims, two wide receivers. It's not that the Eagles set themselves back too far because the team is already very, very strong and they did well in the offseason with Slay and Hargrave. And I think that overall, they're going to be much better than they were in 2019 just due to injuries alone. But you could have just been that much better. You could have helped Carson Wentz out just a little bit more with a Denzel Mims or a J.K. Dobbins or you got another pass rusher in A.J. Epinesa. That's my problem with wasting a second round pick on Hurts. It's nothing to do with Hurts. It's nothing really to do with, you know, ruining your chances in 2021 and 2022. It has to do with the fact that you could have made Carson Wentz's life a little bit easier, whether having a better defense or a better offense, and they chose not to. They chose to make his life a little bit harder because now he has to look behind his shoulder and answer questions about J uh, Jalen Hurts uh, probably week in and week out, especially if he struggles early on in the year. That was my whole problem with it overall. Great question, though. Um, a lot of great questions. Obviously, we're going to do another mailbag either tomorrow or the next day over the weekend. So if your question was not answered, stay tuned for that one. It'll probably be answered on the next one. We had a lot of questions here, so hope you broke it up here into two mailbag videos. Great questions, though. Hopefully I answer guys' questions all the time we have for today. On Foot Up Eagles Now, I'm Thomas Mott signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day.